This video walks through the process of preparing to do a design failure mode and effects analysis. The video will start with a brief introduction to why you might want to do an FMEA, then talk about developing a design tree for your design, then identifying the functions and putting them together in function trees, and finally identifying the failures associated with each of your design functions. So as a designer, why would you want to run an FMEA? Well, number one, you want to understand your design better, and the FMEA process allows you to do that. It also allows you to anticipate potential issues with your design, so you can design around those issues. You can control how and when failures occur, recognizing that every design will fail sometime. You can also plan your detailed analysis and testing using the FMEA. So the end results are you have a more robust design, and you've improved the safety of your design. Start out with the design tree. At this point, what we're going to do is break your overall design into systems and components. For an example, let's say we're going to start out with a wood chair design. This would be a concept level wood chair that you are planning to detail design moving forward. So we're going to use the FMEA process to ensure that that detail design is thorough. The first thing you want to do with your design tree is break your overall design into systems. For the chair, we're going to do a back system, a seat system, and then a leg system. So the first part of our design tree captures those three systems. Let's dive deeper in the back system and look at what the components are. The back consists of some rails, a top rail and two lower rails in this current configuration, and two styles. Now notice the styles actually go all the way down to the floor. So we're going to keep track of the functions they have to perform not only at the back area but also down at the floor. So now our design tree includes the components in the back system. Moving on to the seat system, we can see that we have the seat itself and then we have four aprons around the edges of the seats and then what we can't see here are corner blocks that are holding the legs to the aprons to tie the whole thing together. So we can then expand our design tree to show the seat, corner blocks, and aprons components that are part of the seat system. In the leg system, there are the legs themselves, but in addition, there are the stretchers that keep the legs at an appropriate distance from each other. And notice that the back two legs are actually the styles, which I had previously captured in the back system. So now our design tree also includes the legs and stretchers that are part the components as part of the leg system. Now before you call your design tree finished, you want to think carefully about whether you've thought of everything in your design. In particular for this chair, we've left out a few things. We've forgotten about the fasteners that are going to be used to attach those corner blocks, and we also haven't considered the glue holding the joints together as well as the coating that we're going to put on the surface, whether it paint, be paint or varnish or something like that. These are also important components to consider in your design tree. Now that your design tree is done, you need to go back and consider what every piece of your design does. What is the function? If a part doesn't have a function, then it shouldn't be part of your design. So we should be able to identify at least one function in every piece of that design tree. When looking at functions, I like to start at the overall design and then dive into the functions for the systems and then down to the component level. So starting at the overall design for our wood chair, it's got a few main things that it needs to do. It needs to be comfortable for the user, it has to support the user so it doesn't collapse to the floor, and it has to look good. There might be a few other things, but let's go with these for now. If we look at the systems that we identified, the back system needs to provide comfort to the back, for the user, has to support the user's back when they lean against it, and it also has to support the chair seat back, and this is because the back system is the full style that goes all the way down to the floor as a back leg. The seat system has to provide some seat comfort and also support the user's weight. The leg system needs to support the front edge of the chair seat, and this general system that I created for the glue and the coatings has to hold the parts together and maintain the appearance of the parts over time. Now let's dive down to the component level and look at the functions for each of the components. In the back system, the styles have some functions as do the rails. In the seat system, we have functions for the seat itself, the aprons, the corner blocks, and the fasteners. In the leg system, we have leg 
functions, but also stretcher functions. And then finally in the general category, the coating has functions and the glue has functions. In addition to identifying the function at every level, we want to see how those functions contribute to the overall function of the wood chair. So I've done a little cut color coding here to help out with that. The orange ones, orange functions are associated with comfort of the chair. The green ones are associated with supporting the user and the blue is with maintaining appearance, allowing it to look good. That same approach can be applied back to the component level. And we can do the orange color coding for comfort, green for support, and blue for looking good. Now this is a nice way to visually lay things out for you. There's another approach. For each of your high level functions, the functions at the wood chair level, your overall design, you can have a tree that expands down from the system to the component level. And you can do this for each of your high level functions and you can see how complex, how many things have to work right at the component level in order to deliver that function at the overall design level. Now that we know what the functions are at every level of your design tree, we can look at how that failure at any level can lead to failure of your overall design. Before we go any further, let's talk about what a design failure is. You might think a design failure is when your system doesn't work at all, and certainly that is a design failure. But the reason that that's a design failure is that that sort of design does not satisfy the user. Now, we don't wanna go back and ask every time would this satisfy the user, and we don't have to because you developed a set of functions for your design that are intended to satisfy the user. So we can look at this at the functional level. Anytime your design doesn't perform its intended function, that's when we define it as being a failure. Now, those failures can be complete lack of function failures, but they can also be partial function failures where the user isn't fully satisfied, or they could be intermittent failures, or they could be failures where you did it too well and now the customer doesn't like it because it's not doing exactly what they wanted. A failure is not just when something breaks. It is more than that. It's when the design doesn't perform its intended function. So when we're trying to identify failures, what we want to do is look at the functions. So let's look at it at the top level for your design tree. You want to provide comfort, support the user, and look good. So how could you fail in that? Well, if you fail in providing comfort, that means the customer is uncomfortable. If you fail in supporting the user, then either your chair collapses or it cracks, or maybe it just flexes too much. These are variations of those types of failures. So not satisfying the customer in terms of comfort is either a no function or a partial function, or perhaps even an intermittent function, depending on how uncomfortable they are. Chair collapse is a, a complete failure of supporting the user. Chair cracking is not a complete failure, it's a partial failure. So for example, these show you the types of failures you might see. Now at this top level of your design tree, we call these the effects of the failure modes. We'll talk about failure modes in a moment, but the effects are the things that the customer experiences. Stepping one, down one notch in your design tree, we get to the system level. And the system functions lead to system failures. So for example, the back system had those three functions, supporting the user's back, providing back comfort, supporting the chair seat. There are failures associated with each of those as shown here. Similarly on the seat system, each function has an associated failure. Leg system, general system. So you want to go through each of your functions and identify the ways in which the system can fail at those. We call these failures the failure modes in each system. And finally, down at the component level, we look at the functions and we identify the failures. So let's take the seat system components for an example. The seat itself had two functions, supporting the user's weight, fitting the user's seat, and there are several ways that a design could fail to meet those functions. The aprons had a one function, but there are four failures that we identified. The corner block, again, one function, but four types of failures. 
and then the fasteners, one function, four failures. Now each of these failures are dealing specifically with the design details. These are the things that you can change easily in your design and they're the things you can analyze. So we call these the, these the causes of the failure modes and these are the ones that you will focus your design actions on. So are we ready to move forward into the FMEA process itself? Well, do you have a design tree? Do you have function trees for each of your high-level functions? And do you have a list of failures for every function throughout your design? If you have these things, then you're ready to move on to the next video, the FMEA form.